resin printing is something that I've gone back and forth on over the last couple of years. So when Hagears reached out and offered to send over their RS Turbo resin printer, I was actually really excited to be able to dive in head first and see what resin printing is all about. I'll be honest, this is my first ever experience with a resin printer. I came into this knowing absolutely nothing about resin printing, but right out of the gate, their ecosystem made things feel much easier than I initially expected. From the printer hardware down to their software, everything was just easy right out of the box. And speaking of software, you are limited to their own slicer, Blueprint Studio, but if I'm being completely honest with you, that wasn't a downside to me because it took a lot of the guesswork out of the process. So we're going to take a look at Blueprint Studio in just a little bit, but first I wanted to talk about some of the specs. Starting with the build volume, the RS Turbo gives you 222 by 122 by 228 millimeters. And for those of us who don't speak metric, that's right around eight and three quarter inches wide by four and three quarter inches deep and just under nine inches tall. So it's actually got a pretty good amount of space for a resin printer anyways, definitely enough for larger models, props, or I guess even batch printing smaller parts. In fact, in terms of the build area, the X and Z are pretty similar to your typical FDM bed size. The Y is a little bit tighter, but that hasn't really limited what I've been able to print so far. Now where this printer really starts to flex is in the print quality. Hagears claims it's capable of injection molded level precision, and I'm not just throwing buzzwords around here. Well, actually, yes, I am just throwing buzzwords. <laughs> the parts come off of the machine looking insanely clean. The surface finish, edge sharpness, and honestly just the overall level of detail that you're able to achieve with a resin printer is entirely different than what I'm used to on all of the FDM printers. You get a smooth, professional look that honestly is like injection molded parts. Perfect for miniatures, display models, or I guess even functional prototypes. Coming from regular FDM printers, this kind of output was uh, a little wild to me to see for the first time. Now onto a feature that I didn't actually expect, but it ended up saving my butt a few times, is what they're calling dynamic motion control. This shows up on the printer screen as a live graph during printing, and it basically tracks how much force is being applied during each layer peel. And it shows what I'm gonna call a heartbeat style graph when the print is going well. If the model fails or it doesn't stick to the build platform for whatever reason, that graph flatlines. So from a quick glance, you can tell if something's gone wrong without needing to stop the print or open the lid. And because of how a resin printer works, it can be pretty difficult to see what's happening during those first couple hundred layers. So this feature is super helpful for peace of mind for me anyway, and knowing that I'm not essentially printing nothing for a few hours, especially on those longer prints. Now the RS Turbo also includes a residue detection sensor, which can detect bits of leftover resin or debris that might be left in there down to 0.2 millimeters. So if it picks up on a potential failure, it'll automatically stop the print to prevent any damage to the screen or the resin tank. Now next up is what they're calling the auto leveling floating screen. Now, one of the biggest headaches that I've seen with resin printing, at least from looking online anyways, is making sure that your bed is perfectly level and flush with the screen. But with this feature, that's all handled automatically, so there's no fiddling with screws or trying to guess if you've got it right. You really just plug it in, run those initial calibrations that the printer prompts you to do, and you're good to go. Now, onto some of what I'm gonna call the quality of life features. The RS Turbo supports automatic resin refilling when you're using Hagear's own resin bottles. So if you're doing long prints, you don't actually have to sit there and babysit the resin tank or pause the print to refill it. You can literally just let the system handle it for you. And if you upgrade to their heated and pulse release resin tank, you also get automatic resin heating, which brings the resin from around 50 degrees Fahrenheit up to 73 degrees Fahrenheit in about 20 minutes and will keep it there for the entire print. And that's especially helpful if you're printing in a cooler space or trying to maintain consistency across all of your jobs. Let's talk about software, Blueprint Studio, because for me, this is where Hagear's really made things super simple for somebody like me who's completely new to resin printing. This software gives you what they're calling one-click pre-processing. So instead of manually going in there and placing supports or digging through a bunch of menus, you literally just click a button and let it do its thing. Within a minute or so, your model is pretty much ready to print. And on top of that, it has automatic model repair. So if your STL file has holes, bad geometry, it fixes all of that before slicing. So one of the models that I loaded up had quite a few issues with some of the holes, according to the slicer anyways, but I didn't have to do anything with it, which was awesome because I wouldn't have known where to start. And coming from the world of FDM slicers, where things can get a bit overwhelming if you aren't familiar with where the things are located, 
within the slicer, their software just made it really easy for me right from the beginning. The RS Turbo, along with their other resin printers, lets you print jobs using a few different methods. My personal favorite is over Wi-Fi because that's just what I'm used to with all of my other machines in here, or the option to load your files onto a USB flash drive and transfer them to the machine that way to start printing if you happen to be in an area with no network connection at all. One of the other cool things is if you decide to go all in, Haygears also offers both wash and cure stations that are designed to work seamlessly with their resin printers, complete with their own Wi-Fi connections so you can have complete resin printing workflow from prep to post-processing, all from within the same ecosystem. And you're able to control that within Blueprint Studio which I just thought was a really neat addition. All right, enough talking about the specs. Let's just dive in, take a look at some of the prints that I've been able to achieve with a couple of the different resins that they sent over for us to try. Now, the first resin that I tried was their flexible production resin, which has almost a rubber-like consistency. And admittedly, this one gave me a little bit of trouble on the first few tries. Being a flexible resin, to me, it seemed like it almost wanted to stick to the bottom of the resin tank or the vat instead of actually adhering to the build platform itself. After a few tries, though, making sure the platform was clean and free from any debris, I was able to get a successful calibration print done, and this thing came out awesome. Down to fractions of a millimeter in some cases, they came out clear as day. It's something... I've never seen on an FDM printer, even using a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. Next, I tried their general purpose modeling resin, which thankfully was much easier to work with than the flexible stuff. And being a fan of Rick and Morty, I had to print out a little bust of Rick to see how it would look. And with all of these prints, I just let the software do what it thought was best for the model. But after looking at how this one printed, I almost think it could have been printed from the base down or the base up, depending on how you look at it but it laid the model on its side, which did require a fair amount of support material, but the supports did come off pretty easily, and I was able to sand down most of the little support nubs that were left over with some 600 grit sandpaper. I think it came out really cool, and unless I look really close, there's literally no layer lines you can see, and this wasn't even printed at the finest detail level possible. Admittedly, I'm not an artist, but I can see how this would be a really great tool for like making custom board game pieces or figurines and painting them to look exactly how the model would look like in person. And if I thought I could actually get it to look halfway decent, I might pick up an airbrush kit or tiny paintbrushes to give Rick some color, but that one's just a little bit outside of my skill sets, at least for the time being. Now, while I was looking around for some things to print for this video, I came across these custom checkers. And then another thought popped into my head, why not make my own Connect 4 game? So I found a model online, printed the game frame itself out on one of my FDM printers, and then printed out all the little checker pieces on the resin printer. I painted them with some spray paint to give myself a custom game set in like four or five hours. And speaking of custom game sets, I've always been a fan of board games ever since I was a little kid. And while this one might be a bit controversial as a family game, Monopoly has always been one of my favorites to play. So I got to thinking... I wonder if I could make some custom pieces for that game too. Now these ones are super tiny, as you'd expect, but the level of detail that I was able to get out of them, once again, blew my mind. These can't be bigger than maybe an inch, inch and a half, and they have every bit of detail that you would expect out of an actual Monopoly piece. Now all of the models that I printed today are linked down in the description below if you want to try printing them out for yourself. Now that you've seen what this printer is actually capable of, I thought I would take you into the software real quick and show you how easy it can be to download a model from one of the many model repositories online, import it into their slicer, and get it started on the printer. So inside of Blueprint Studio, when you first boot it up, if you haven't already bound your printer, that's a pretty easy process. You can bind a new device, and there is a five-digit code that will be displayed on the printer's screen interface when you first set it up. After that, you can click onto your printer and see some of the information. If the printer is actually printing, it'll show a progress bar right down here. It also shows your release film service life and which resin cartridge you have installed in the machine. If your printer needs any software updates, you can do updates over the air with the update tab. We are on the latest version, so nothing needed to be done there. And after you have your device all loaded up into the slicer, all you need to do is click this plus button at the top left-hand corner. This will bring up your workspace and show you all of your current projects, and for this we can just click on New Project. 
Now we are using the RS Turbo, which is a very similar machine to the Reflex RS. The RS Turbo does have an upgraded LCD screen interface though. So for this case, we're gonna choose Reflex RS. We're not using the pulsing release module. We're gonna use general purpose. And the resin we're using today is their PAS-10 standard modeling resin. Now the general purpose modeling resin is the only one that doesn't come in a bottle that is able to refill the tank automatically. All the rest of these more rectangle style bottles are able to fit into the back of the machine, into the slot they've created, and will automatically refill the resin as the machine uses it up. And for our layer thickness with this standard modeling resin, we have 50 microns. After that, we can hit apply. And then it's as simple as either dragging and dropping your files onto the plate to start importing them. Or we can also go up to the top left hand corner here and click on the import button. I'm gonna find all of our STL files and I can select them all. The only one I'm not going to print is the LS calibration cube. So as you can see here, Blueprint Studio has automatically imported all of the STLs that we selected. Now these are some pretty fun ones because they're all 3D printing related. And this one even slots together. So we've got our full spool, an empty spool, a little pizza slice on a print bed. We've got our printer nozzle and a couple other cool things that we're gonna print out. So in this case, we've got a couple options, but the easiest one is just to click one click slice. We can either send to the printer immediately after slicing, or we can deselect that, hit start, and it will process this entire sheet. It will auto-orient all of the models, move them into place, and put supports underneath them. It takes about a minute or so for this to slice, and then after you're done, you have the option to go in there, take a look, see if there's anything that you might wanna change, but for all of the prints that I've done, there's nothing that I saw that needed to be changed. And now you can open this project back up and see exactly how all of your models are gonna be printed. Since everything looks pretty good here, we can click View Slice Files, and at this stage, we can simply click on it and send it over via LAN connection. Now the other option would be to click One Click Slice. We can enter the name of the slice so we can call these Monopoly pieces. And with this button checked, it'll automatically send our file over to the printer as soon as we are done slicing. And after about a minute or so, it sliced our file and sent it on down to the printer. So at this point, we can head back downstairs and start our print from the printer. Once you're down at the printer, you can click on Job List and you'll see the file that you sent over and it's as easy as clicking Print. We'll let the machine do its thing for the next couple of hours. When it's finished, your prints are ready to be washed. Now I did do two wash cycles, one before cleaning the supports off, and then we'll do one after cleaning the supports off. It took about 10 or 15 minutes to get them all removed, and then after that, they are ready to go into your wash station. I ran these on wash at the highest possible speed setting that they have for about three minutes. <laughs> And after the wash cycle is all finished up, we can put them inside the cure station. And I ran this for about 10 minutes at 40 degrees Celsius. When that's finished, you can pull them out of the cure station and your parts are ready for post-processing. So that is just a first look at the Haygears RS Turbo. I do have more planned for that checkers game that I showed off a little bit ago. I do wanna create some of my own mountain maker checkers pieces to go along with the ones that we printed with a little crown on it. So that will be the next video in this little resin printer series. If you're interested in seeing that, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments below what you wanna see next with the resin printer. Take care folks and a big thank you to Hay Gears for sending over the RS Turbo. Take care.